We're going to Boise, Idaho. Boise, Idaho. This is Ray Brewer along with Mike Germala. I'm the singing one of our group. Uh-huh. And it's a Rebel Room, a UNLV sports podcast. Talking all things UNLV athletics. And right now that's the Fresno State Bulldogs getting it done late Saturday night. Barely getting it done late yeah. Saturday night. No points in the second half. Couldn't get a first down. Still got it done. 28-22 over Colorado State. That means UNLV is now tied with Colorado State. And the point system, the averages, all that other stuff means that UNLV... If they beat Reno, please, please don't lose to Reno, Michael. Yes. They will play for the Mount West Championship. And and, and finish my sentence. Go ahead, finish it off, Michael. If you win that game, not 100%, but I think you're going to the playoffs. I think if UNLV wins two games, they're in the playoffs. Insane. 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 Now, you're talking to a guy. This program, college football playoffs. Correct. To win, Ray, I've been through it all, right? I've seen all the losses, the only handful of bowl games all time in program history. And the fact that UNLV has nudged and fought its way to this. What a gutsy win Friday night at San Jose. Big time. Pouring down rain, pick six, down at the half, tightened the muscles a little bit and got through to the finish line. Reminded me a little bit of the Hawaii game where – it was ugly early, and they kind of fought through to got, get the win. And maybe that's the sign of a good team. They win games that maybe other Rebel teams wouldn't have won. Mike, they went 6-0 and on the road this year. That's like a decade worth of wins on the road for, for the program. It was uh, a very, very gutsy win, very resilient. They um, made some mistakes early. They fell into a hole. They threw a pick six. They did you know, they offense basically did nothing for the first quarter because of the conditions. And, you know, they stuck with it. They ground it out. They ran the ball. And, uh, you know, Caden Chittenden kicked a 52-yard field goal. First, he missed a 52-yard field goal in the monsoon. Then he came out in the second half, and he nailed it to get the scoring started on their first drive of the half, which I thought was a big uh, play for momentum. And then down the stretch, man, they had a third and 12 when they were up by, I want to say, three points. And they could have handed off. And you know, punted and you know played that game, but they they let, they put the ball in Haj Malik Williams' hands. He scrambled around and he found Ricky White on the sideline for 13 yards. And then you're fourth down, like fourth and nine, and it's the back shoulder to Ricky White. There's so many big plays all around. Very gutsy win. I've that was the loudest and most raucous I've heard their locker room after any game since Barry Odom has gotten here. They really, really enjoyed that win. They, I I know that they felt like they earned it. but um, And then the way everything fell for them the next day, like you couldn't have asked for a better, a better scenario. Reminded me a little bit of, do you remember uh, when UNLV became bowl eligible Bobby's year in the snow and Air Force? I, I was Were not covering the team. Was, I was not, was I was not covering okay. the team at the time. But it was just like one of those mis- – the, the one thing – I think what makes the win over San Jose special and what made the win during Tim Cornette's years against Air Force special is you got to remember UNLV's having practice in 110-degree weather, and 85% of their reps are in either awful wind or brutal heat. So to go up to San Jose – when it's pouring down rain and it's cold and there's nobody in the stands and you're getting smacked around a little bit to, yeah. to be able to, to to pony up and get the dub, I thought was was substantially important. It shows just that that mental fortitude of the program, a, a great win, and also um, mental fortitude and toughness. And up in the press box, open press box in San Jose. Well, was it really? We're up, we're up in the conditions, and I'm what wearing. What were you a, wearing? I'm wearing a I'm wearing a thermal undershirt. I'm wearing a sweater. You know, some people have towels over their laptops to keep the, the rain from uh, spraying against it. But, you know, we stuck it out. We also showed resiliency. But, yeah, there's the, it, that was a, a very – that was a highlight win. That's the kind of game that you win during a season. Like, it ends up being special. You win the conference championship. You do something the program's never done. And then you look back and you say, what was it? And that's, you know, one of those games you point to. Like, man, that was a big one. Um, that's one where they showed up and that championship medal was kind of forged. Um 
and they're they're giving them a, uh, themselves a chance to to make it a special season. So, yeah, there's a huge win. Can't say enough. And how about um, UNLV's running? They get the ball with seven minutes and forty seconds left. And how do they end the game? Ten straight handoffs to Greg Burrell, your yeah. boy, the local yeah, guy, the freshman. freshman. Yeah. Jaden Thomas has got 135 yards and a touchdown. And but no, they're like Greg Burrell. You're the hammer. Get in there. Ten play drive. Ten handoffs to Greg Burrell. Clock is run out. Game over. Yeah, and the the I'm just I I hate. You know what I hate about sports? My I have two pet peeves in the world. My, Re- instant replay reviews. No, no, no. My first pet peeve has nothing to do with sports. And I hope you're not one of these people. Okay. I hate people that park backwards. Yeah, oh, I hate it. Hate it. Drives me nuts. I mean, why slow down traffic so you can park? I don't I don't care. And it takes longer to do that than it would to just park yeah. normally like a normal yeah. person would. The, the other thing I hate about sports is we spend our whole lives rooting and waiting and hoping and praying that we have a season like you and all we had last year, like they had this year. Or you're a Celtics fan and they, they win the, the NBA championship. And the second the, the champagne pops to celebrate, you're like, oh, boy, how are we going to look next year? Are we going to lose this person? <laughs> yeah. Is Odom going like, to – instead of savoring the moment and savoring the journey, we're worried about, you know, what's next. And now that UNLV is kind of in the driver's seat, they have to beat Reno – which is a good possibility the game's here. But Boise has to keep winning to remain in the playoff because Boise can't lose, right? They're not far enough ahead of, like, a Tulane is the next team up. Army lost, which is a great result for UNLV. Tulane is ranked 19th by the, in, uh, like, the AP, and I mm-hmm. believe that's where they are. They're 20th or 19th for the, the college football playoff rankings. Boise's 12th. So if Boise loses this game this week, I believe they're playing Oregon State. They're playing one of these Pac-2 teams. Um, so it doesn't matter for the Mountain West standings. But if they lose that and they drop behind Tulane, if Tulane beats Memphis, I could totally see those two teams, those two teams flipping. So, yeah, Boise State's like still got some pressure on them to win. And does that – so I'm like, the, how, do you, how does UNLV beat Boise State? Because we watched them and, – and, and I hate that we're not talking about the Reno game. And I pray to God they're not looking past Reno. They, from the way it sounded at the press conference today, no, none of the players bit on any future-looking questions. None of them bit on college playoffs. None of them bit on the rankings. It was all, you know, we just want to play this game. We want to win the cannon. We want to keep the cannon. Uh, we're only worried about UNR. So from that perspective, I think you can relax. The players are. It seems like they were in on it. So they're they're focused because that you and I are allowed to look forward. We can look yeah, forward. Yeah, but as I, far as I mean, want. people might hate me now because my whole life I've said the only game that matters. Yeah, is beating Reno, and it's still it's still I was gonna and, and, and I hate that you're not from here because uh-huh. you look at it big picture. Mm-hmm. Being uh, uh, hating Reno like I do, and like many of our listeners do. And like many of the fan base does, is realizing that it's short sighted. Isn't there also? But as a as a UNLV diehard, wouldn't you also take satisfaction from a, the bigger win of? It's yes, it's about the cannon, you know, but you've turned them essentially into a stepping stone. You correct. matter, they don't. Your big their brother, their little brother. Their facilities suck. They're yeah. But what I take more satisfaction in is when I go over there in April for a random event uh-huh. and I walk by and I see that cannon. That gives me satisfaction. Yeah. Okay. And the reason why is you don't understand, Mike. <laughs> Reno, for the longest of time, because it's based in northern Nevada and because the legislature was in Carson City, mm-hmm. kept getting more resources than UNLV and they bragged that they had their medical school and that they were some great institution and blah, blah, blah. And it's complete crap. It's complete crap. It, it is absolute garbage. Reno is a second class city with second class people. I, I don't care. Now, I wish I... Okay, so there was a question that I was going to ask. I went into the press conference today planning to ask Barry Odom about this, but then I didn't quite pull the trigger because the tone of it, I, I kind of chickened out a little. It's not a, a very important question, but I was going to ask him, for the college football playoffs, since it is a human, humans doing those rankings, if you get a chance this week, 
do you try to like Absolutely. do you run up the who cares I, about the yeah. without, without using the phrase run up the score i wanted to ask him do you worry about point difference did, and all did that did you watch the ohio state indiana game yeah, i didn't watch it but the, I, I saw, kid, yeah a kid the the kid breaks free he's going to go to the end zone but he doesn't want to give any end of the ball back, so he slides at the one. Everybody's like, oh, what a brilliant play. So unselfish, so smart. Ohio State calls a timeout. They line up and they run the ball into the end zone. Yeah. Because they wanted the, the yeah. point difference. So UNLV is, you know, in the playoff rankings, Tulane's 20th, UNLV's 23rd. If Tulane squeaks by Memphis this week, you know, 21, uh, you know, like if they win 17 to 15 or something, and then UNLV, if you can beat Reno... 55 to three it just it I, I feel like for humans on the playoff committee it's different than if you beat reno 30 to 20 so i think there is some value and if you get a chance barry odom are you going to run up the score but i i didn't feel like he would um i feel like he would have shut down the, the door immediately like you know we're just going to try to win this game and focus on what we can control and all that i didn't feel like i would get the real answer um but that's on me i chickened out a little bit but yeah, so that, but going back to my original point, I think you're going to get what you want. They're going to win the cannon. They're going to try to run up the score as much as they can. They're going to try to score 70 points um, and really make this their, their last impression heading into this Mountain West title game. And then uh, they get to be the road warriors on the road. And to, to not to look ahead, yeah, let, let's look ahead a little bit. You beat Reno, you go up to Boise State. I hate that spot. When Boise State <laughs> came in here and beat UNLV uh, earlier in the season on October 25th, when they left the field, I thought to myself, "You and if they if there's a rematch in the championship game, we knew it would be in Boise." I said, I, "There's no way UNLV can win that game with the way they can't block Boise State. Uh, Boise State's too big and strong up front. Uh, going on the road, UNLV can't win that game." Four weeks later, I don't really feel that way. Boise has not played well since that game. Yeah, but it's going to be cold there. It is going to be and cold. they are going to allow people into the stadium, right? Yeah, it's, okay, it's going that's to be a packed. Problem. It's going and to be. And they do have somebody who a month ago you were given the Heisman Trophy. To. I'm still giving it to him. He still okay. got my vote. I don't know. I'm not allowed to technically. You were not allowed to say who we're going to vote for. Okay. But I'm I'm going to vote for Aston Janty. I'm pretty sure. Okay. And is, would it be rude of us for him to pull a hammy next on Saturday? Are you if you're going to beat them, you want them at full because you need the you need their strength of schedule. You need to impress the committee. That's what you're worried about if you're UNLV for big picture. You want Boise State to win this week. You want them to be ranked number nine in the country heading into the Mountain West title game. And then you want to beat them by two scores and really make your case that, hey, we deserve to go to you know, like to Happy Valley and play Penn State. And the, the, I'd love that because the, the they got a chance tournament. to beat Penn State. Yeah. so I'd rather play Penn State and Happy Valley at 5 p.m. with the lights going and everything than yeah. Boise and Boise. Yeah. So you really – these next two weeks, you want to win. You've also got to make a case to the committee. So you're going to try to beat Reno by 100 points. You need Boise State to win this week and look as good as possible and be healthy. And then you need to beat them straight up on their home turf. Mm -hmm. And those two things, I believe, will get UNLV into the playoffs. So that's what's on the line. It would be much easier if Memphis loses on Thursday. They play before UNLV does. They play a Thanksgiving game against Memphis. And that's a tough game for them. And if they drop that – then it's clear sailing. Then the picture is very clear. You and all these two wins and they're in. So, Grimal, are you a Thanksgiving guy? Not this year. I'll be in. I'll be Thursday and Friday. I'll be in Phoenix, Arizona, for that UNLV basketball uh, oh, holiday didn't, tournament. Didn't but realize I, that. do you like turkey? Well, I, I, everybody knows my. I like dirt. turkey. Some I, people do know that you're. A peculiar eater, peculiar so you're not going to have some green beans this year. Well, I I like green beans. That's one of that's probably my favorite. Out of a vegetable. can, out of a can, I will microwave them. But I don't even know if those are green beans. Those thing, are. I don't like stuffing. I don't like gravy of any kind. So it's going to be it's going to be turkey breast. Okay. No gravy. It's going to be mashed potatoes. No gravy. Oh yeah, you like Thanksgiving. And you like bread too. Yeah, I like bread. I like green Do you like beans. Pie? I like carrots. I don't like pie. I don't like fruit pastries. I don't like it when fruit is involved in there in the mix. That's unnatural to me. What about a pecan pie? I don't like it. That's like if it's a pastry, it's got to be like it's got to be dessert items, not like nuts, not fruits, um, nothing that's from the earth in that way. Okay. Um, but yeah, I the the idea of Thanksgiving, yeah. Yeah. So the the one thing going back to the Boise game, and again, I hate to overlook Reno, but who, we probably won't be here to podcast next week. The one thing I do like UNLV 
is they're going to coach that game like it's the national championship game. You're going to get the best of Barry Odom, the best of his coordinators, and the best preparation that you're going to get. And we've raved about Barry Odom being an X's and O's guy. With the exception of Boise having a slight edge on the offensive line. Massive, I would say. Okay, a massive edge on the offensive line, which we saw, you know, on the last drive of the game here where they just jammed it down UNLV's throat. Barry Odom, could he make enough adjustments, right, to get it done? Could he outcoach them? It's... He, it's uh, that, that the main question is the trenches on both sides of the ball. You know, they could not give Haj Malik Williams any time to throw when they needed to pass. And that was, I thought, what lost them the game. I thought they did a, a pretty good job on Genty. And he telegraphed that interception at the end of the first half. Uh, Boise State, he did. That was a, a game we, changer. We all play. saw it coming in the press box. Yeah, and Boise State. Um, so this time around, if you get Haj Malik Williams to play a clean game, if you can. So when you say, can they make some scheme adjustments? I think defensively, they're okay. I go back to the offense. Can they scheme a way to, when it's third and six, can you scheme a play is with some gimmick motion or something, some window dressing, to occupy the Boise defensive line to stop that rush for a second or to make them hesitate? So you can give Hajmalik Williams enough time to drop back and throw a ball. Can you come up with a dozen sort of like pass plays you haven't put on tape that have some sort of weird motion or confusion aspect because you're not going to block them straight up. So how? what are you going to do to give Haj Malik Williams some time? I think you've got to scheme that. That's where it's Brennan Marion comes in. That's where Vance Weiss comes in, the offensive line coach. So that's what I'm, I would be thinking about um, scheme-wise. You're, you're very excited. I think you looked up the line for... <laughs> UNLV's an 18-point favorite against Reno. If they double it, you're, you can feel good about the final score. Yeah. The, the Boise also an 18-point favorite. Oh, no, a 20-point favorite. Against uh, Oregon State. So UNLV and Boise State win by 25 points apiece. They're both, you know, Boise's top 10 going into that game. UNLV's top 20. That's a, Odom said today he believes that game would be win and you're in for the playoffs. Mm-hmm. He thinks the Mountain West He thinks the Mountain West champ is in. Um, Which, based of on the course, he's going to he say because he's also selling himself. He is selling himself. Okay. But he's not, you know, the, he's not a big-time promo, self-promotion guy or team promotion guy. Um but I, th- I think he really believes that, and I, I believe it too. I, it's not a guarantee just because Tulane is having a good season, but um, they don't have – they've got some you know quality opponents left, but they don't have a glamour game. Like UNLV has a chance to win at Boise State mm-hmm. to win the title. I think that would trump anything that Tulane can put on the table. So, mm-hmm. yeah, huge. And once again, it's another week where we're asking – not well, one, is this the biggest cannon game of all time? And then once they win that, this Boise State, this conference title game, is that the biggest game of U- in UNLV football history? We ask every week, is this the biggest game they've ever played? And now we can do it twice this so week. So we, you asked me this the other day. And to me, the biggest Cannon game was still when Jeff Horton went back to Reno. Yeah. Um, Jeff Horton was the coach of Reno, left for here. You know, somebody walking away in Reno, God forbid – also, when Quincy Sanders, you know, a star from McQueen, picked UNLV over UNR, went back up there. He famously threw his helmet at somebody. Nobody knows where the helmet is. <laughs> um, there's been some some impactful games, to say the least. But in terms of a game that has the most meaning, and, and you've got to look at it from the lens of UNR, they're not going to a bowl. This is all they've got to play for. This, this is their this gives that, this, uh, this gives them massive stakes to be spoilers. You can ruin – like we're talking about how great this is for UNLV, historic and all-time. Yeah. And from a UNR's perspective, they can ruin all that just by playing a good game on Saturday. So the, the, the stakes are high for them as well. They'll, Cor- they'll give you their best shot. Correct. And, I mean, if UNR were to beat UNLV, it would be – Arguably the most painful loss in program. Uh, that's tough to say. I mean, they've been through so many that Southern Utah loss at home, the Howard loss at home, Colin Kaepernick destroying UNLV year after year. Uh, but it's 
It's it's definitely interesting to say the least. Uh, make make no bones about it. The fact that I mean, thank God it's UNLV that's in the spot, not Reno. You know what I mean? What I will say is, you obviously do not want this to happen because it takes the playoffs off the t- it takes the playoffs out of po- possibility completely. But if UNLV mm-hmm. does lose to UNR, um, they're not automatically out of the Mountain West title game because Colorado State would still have to win. Um, cause if they lose that they're hosting Utah state, um, on Friday. So we'll actually, so we'll know heading into the UNLV game. If Colorado state loses that yeah, but game, this is all about the play. The, yeah. the, the importance here is if you win two, you get into the playoff. If yeah. you get into the playoff, Barry Odom has no reason to leave here. UNLV would get the money to, to afford him. And if you can, and, and your path to the playoff is easier in Vegas than it would be at um, uh, wherever in the hell he would end yeah. up. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yes. There'd be no reason to – if 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 we could afford him, which I think we can, no state tax, um, you're going to have the playoff money come in. And if you keep if you keep that, then this is a – maybe they could churn it for a few more years. No, I, I, I like that. I like that idea because um, I know that some fans – as you were saying, the people people have a hard time enjoying the moment, and they're always looking forward to like the next bad thing that's going to happen. But you see it the more UNLV wins, you see fans speculating, "Oh, now we're going to lose uh, Barry Odom. Now we're going to lose Brennan Marion." Um, every time the defense plays well, it's like, "Oh, now do we have to worry about losing Mike Shear? Um, he's a guy that people think is going to go with Odom." So, but uh, but you're I, taking I, the opposite tack. You I think would, if they win, the more think they win, that no matter what happens, Marion won't be back. In my opinion. <laughs> Uh, I just think that he's he's basically taken the Campbell quarterback and the third string quarterback at UNLV and won twenty games. Right, the third stringer is now the starter at USC thanks to him, and the Campbell quarterback has you on the door of the college football playoff. And like my, our friend Marcus Aurora, for example. Yeah, is making just got a new deal at Arizona State. Sun Devils eight and two or nine and two or whatever they are. He's now making one point one million to be the OC at um in Tempe. So the fact that we're paying Marion three forty to be our OC, the guy's leaving some money on the table in his fir- formidable years. Yeah, so that's. It's probably I I just like that. It's interesting that there's probably going to be movement on the coaching staff, but your tact that you're taking is most people th- seem to think success means the head coach is more likely to leave. You're saying the more they win, the more successful they are, the better chance they have of keeping him because they're showing him like, hey, look, this is what's possible at UNLV. If you want to go to your new school and try to, if you don't make the playoffs there, you're on the hot yeah, seat like, here. Could, could like, somehow we could could somehow UNLV get Barry from. Two to four in the assistant pool from 350 to 750. You know, with no state tax. Well, if you're trying to be a foot. And not having to be part of the NIL, right? Well, if you're pivoting to being a football school, which they are, then that's one of the investments that you you make. You become a a football program, you divert all of your revenues there. Um, This money that you're going to get from the, the Mountain West Conference for staying. Um, I don't know what the process is for allocating that, you know, for the budget, but I would expect that most of it goes to football. Um, So that could be what you're talking about, expanding the coaching pool, expanding your recruiting budget for flights and um, visits and all that sort of stuff. So um, here's what I found. They say that they're putting it into football. They're pivoting to being a football program. Not that they're saying that, but um, they clearly are. And that's what it takes. If you want to keep Odom, hey, we're making the playoffs. We're paying you. Not as much as a Power Five school, but comparable, like some, like within reason. Um, so yeah, they can make they can probably make a pretty good case to keep him uh, if they win these two games. And it's it's he seems to enjoy it here, and he knows at least that he can win. He knows that he's got job security. He doesn't ever have to worry about that. So um, it's a good situation here. Like if some team is going to take him away, they're going to have to really um, give him a good offer and give him a good situation. Sure. And and again, do you want to right now in Vegas, you're now 
I know every coach thinks that they're going to end up being Nick Saban. Or you see the guy at Indiana who went from a lower tier of school and is killing it at IU, right? And with the portal, the options are limitless. But UNLV is a lot more than James Matt. It's it's. I think ultimately, does Barry Odom want to live in Las Vegas? Yeah, that's in. That's part of it. Um, you know, he's got kids that are playing football. One of them is back in Arkansas playing out the year. He talked about that a few weeks ago at a press conference. Someone asked him about his son um, doing that because he had come to Las Vegas and he was playing at a local high school here. And then he was at Faith, and yeah, then he, went, he was splitting reps with a, a kid. Yeah, and what Barry Odom said was, um, "Oh, it was during the the bye week because yeah. Odom was able to go back and Correct. watch his son play." And he said that. Um, his son just like you know he they said when he moved when he took the job here Odom told his family like hey I know it's a tough time for a kid to move you know in high school you have friends and everything but let's do it for a year as a family and then if you want to come back we'll figure it out and that's what they did he came here for a year he played uh, football he wanted to go back to Arkansas and roll with his friends and um, finish high school there so they figured out a way to to make that happen where with a living situation and all that so that's what Odom said so I don't know if that's necessarily points to them not liking Las Vegas. Um, I mean, the, 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 regardless of who, who the head coach is, Barry Odom or whomever else, I think the code has been cracked on how to win here. Um, I think you need to get a handful of players from the portal who were high-end recruits that couldn't make it, find the right fit, mix them in with some good freshmen, and call it a day. Yeah, it sounds so simple when you put it like that. Yeah, and yet it's, it took, a, it's a simple thing. It took 50 years, but yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. So we will try to be back. I know people are glamoring or clamoring for UNLV basketball. We'll get to that later. For Mike, I'm Ray, Rebel Room. Happy Thanksgiving. 